Hello, I'm Monica Weitzel. Welcome to a great night on Community Hotline, the nonprofit showcase taped right here at Metro East Studios in Gresham. As always, we'll be speaking with some terrific organizations that exist to support a specific segment of the community. First, we'll talk with Breast Friends. As you may have guessed, this organization is a valuable resource to those affected by breast cancer. And who doesn't know someone affected by this disease in one way or another? Following Breast Friends, we will talk with Giovanni Blair McKenzie about Queer Intersections Portland. Giovanni is the founder and director of the group he organized as a way to build stronger communities for LGBTQ youth and young adults. He is one charismatic young man. It's an hour full of important information, so don't miss it next on Community Hotline. Hi, welcome to Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel and we're here in Gresham and tonight we're going to be talking with nonprofit organizations that are doing some amazing things in the community. To start off, we'll be talking with Becky Olson from Breast Friends. Thanks for being here, Becky. Thanks for inviting me, my pleasure. So Breast Friends, I love the name. It's, <laughs> it's catchy, it's fun, kind of funny, um, makes people kind of giggle does, a little bit, it does. but it's a very serious subject. Um, yes. Tell our viewers, if you could, what, what Breast Friends is all about. Maybe a little history about okay. why it was started and okay. uh, what your mission is. Okay, well, we actually started 15 years ago in 2000. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Happy Thanks, anniversary. I know. We made it. Yeah. It's a brass roots. Um, I, I was a, I'm a three-time breast cancer survivor. And when we started 15 years ago, um, I was just you know, pretty new as a, as a breast cancer patient. Uh -huh. um, I'd been uh, you know, diagnosed four years prior, but one of the things that my friend Sharon and I figured out w pretty early on is that what was missing in the world of breast cancer was teaching the friends and family how to support mm. their loved ones. People would say things like, you know, gosh, Monica, I am so sorry you're going through this. If there's anything I can do, let me know. Right. And, and, and you go, I don't know what to yeah, ask for. Exactly. And so we tend to say, oh, thanks, I will, I'll let you know. And then we don't. <laughs> right, right. Right. And then it's the friends. It's very hard to ask for help when is, you do need it. It is. Yeah. And, you know, we're women. We think we can do it all yeah, anyway. That's exactly right. Um, but then what happens is kind of an interesting phenomenon. The friends think that you're okay because you haven't called and you promised you would. Mm -hmm. And you're not okay. And right. now you're wondering where your friends went, where they disappear to. And, and it happens so often. So we decided back in 2000 that we wanted to start an organization to help teach the friends and family how to be a better support. Uh -huh. And that's where we started. But over this last 15 years, things have evolved tremendously. We have a lot of programs that are directly related to the patient. We work with patients from the moment of their diagnosis where they're really kind of freaked out and yeah. they're not really quite sure what to do with it's a rather shocking it thing is to be it told. is and you know we because we're, we're all survivors we know what that feels like so we all kind of go through the same scares and the same yeah. fears and I mean I remember I was so upset I couldn't even see the dial on I was trying to call my husband on my cell phone wow. I had to keep redialing because I couldn't see the numbers yeah, you know yeah. and I imagine everybody handles it in different ways yeah. but but you still go through the, a lot of the same yeah, things. So yeah. you have that, that mm -hmm. empathy and, and yep. can understand. What and the part of that fear, too, through. is you don't know if you're going to be in the group that survives or the group that doesn't. Mm, right. And the good news is more women survive now than ever yeah. before, but we still lose too many. Right, so right. you don't know which group you're going to be in when that happens. And so that when people are, are afraid and they hear the news, that's a big part of what's going on. Am I going to be in that group that doesn't make it? Right. And not knowing is right. a, a terrifying thing. Yeah. yeah. What, what do you find is the... Um, is the hardest thing for, for women that are, find out they have breast cancer? I mean, is it, is it the treatment itself? Is it how to deal with their everyday life? Is, you know, yes. I mean, is <laughs> yes to all of that. I mean, the whole thing is pretty much overwhelming, it is, isn't it? Yeah, because you know what, the thing with breast cancer is it's a very outward 
thing. You know, you know it's going to involve some degree of surgery, whether it's a mastectomy or a lumpectomy. You know that the landscape is going to change. Right. Um, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's a <laughs> you know expression. that the chemo is probably going to cause hair loss. And for women, you know, when, when this changes and then we lose mm -hmm. our hair, that's our femininity and, it's, and our sensuality and all yeah. these things are impacted. So you've got that. And then you've got the fear, am I even going to survive? Will I watch my kids grow up? Right. Will my husband still love me? There's all these things that, yeah. that play a part yeah. in this. And so we, you know, we try to address those things when we talk to the, the women, when they mm -hmm. either call, call us or somebody refers them to us. And so we've just been doing a lot of really interesting things. Um, one of the other things that we try to do is customize our support. We have, we don't, somebody said to us one time, why don't you guys put breast friends in a box and then, <laughs> You know, but it's not a one size fits it's all, is not, it? <laughs> it's not. I mean, emotional support means different things to different yeah, people. Yeah. And so, what we try to do is find out what it means to you. Right, and right. then, how can we support you in a way that you feel supported? And it's, it is different for everybody. I'm sure it is. I, I know somebody I'm close to who's gone through breast mm -hmm. cancer and, and is very, very private. It yeah. doesn't want to reach right. out to, except a few people, mm -hmm. you know, just a very few people. Mm -hmm. Where other people, what, if it were me? I'd be telling everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's just me. I would. Well, you know, we do I'd encourage be, that actually. I, I would be reaching out yeah. for support everywhere I could mm -hmm. find it. Um, yeah. Although, you know, when I've been in situations where I needed some help before, mm -hmm. I didn't do that. So, right. you know, it's hard to know. It's it hard is to hard know to know, you know react until you're right like in it. That. That's yeah. right. That's right. So, what are some of the uh, of the services or, or programs that you offer? Um, well, one of one of our favorite ones, kind of recently, is called Bald Is Beautiful. And you know, when women are going through chemo and they've lost not only their hair, but their yeah. eyebrows and their yeah. eyelashes, and you just don't feel like the same person. And we actually partnered with a photographer and a makeup artist. And we invite these ladies to come in and they're, some of them are completely bald, some have a little hair growth, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. But we do the makeover on them, we do oh, photos. Fine. And in fact, we had a photo shoot today. And, oh, did you? Oh. And um, it's, just, it's just amazing to, to see how these women just really, yeah you know, come out of this, they feel beautiful for the first time in a long time. I'm sure that's r true. Um, I know you brought a picture, I don't know if they'll be able to bring it up now, of the bald is beautiful. If mm -hmm. they can, it'd be a great time to see it. Otherwise, we can catch it later in the show. But, um, it, you know, they, they are beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I don't think not having hair, it's like men. I, you know, I think a man without hair looks great. You know, I don't have an <laughs> issue with that. Um, you know, unless it's a, some little funky comb over. But, um, but yeah, seriously, seen you know, some of those. <laughs> yeah, but really, um, it's kind of amazing, mm -hmm. and, and for a woman who's confident enough to be mm -hmm. able to, to just go there, mm -hmm. it's kind of cool. Yeah, it really yeah. is, and a lot of the ladies, when we first suggest it, they're just like, oh, well, you're, but then you're they see the other photos. Yeah, your hair is you, part of your image, yeah, you know, it is. and some women more than others. That's a really and, you know, thing. we have this wall in our office, this giant wall yeah. filled with all these pictures of these women, oh. and what happens a lot of times is they'll come in for some other support, they'll see that wall, and they'll go, Mm. <laughs> Can I do that? Oh wow! <laughs> and we do. You know, we, we do about two of them a month, and just you know, it just it's beautiful. That's it's fun. A, it's I mean, you great. get big smiles out of that, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So that's just one of our programs. Yeah. But we have our Thriving Beyond Cancer retreats for women who are done with cancer or done with their treatment mm -hmm. and kind of ready to move to that next stage of life. And it's amazing. You know, you'd think that once your last treatment is done, you're kind of excited. It's time to move on. Right. But there's this kind of like you just kind of get almost paralyzed because it's like, who's watching me now? The doctor just said, you're, you're good, on your own. Yeah, yeah, see you in three months, six months, yeah. whatever. And yeah. you're wondering Even who's that watching me. That leash is not on you anymore. Yes, yeah. it's like the safety net just got yeah. pulled out. Yeah. And so the Thriving Beyond Cancer program is really good because it helps women. We kind of take them from that place where they are right now and help them kind of work their way through the next right. stage of their life. Sharon is actually the facilitator of that. She's a certified life coach, and she, again, mm -hmm. is the other co-founder. So she teaches that class, and it is brilliant. And the ladies that come out of there are thriving, and it's really quite do you, exciting. Do you find that women change yes. after? I mean, I would think yes. you would change after going through that. In, in what ways do you, well, do you see? Well, you know, I don't think we change really who we are or mm -hmm. what our belief system is, but I think what happens is with anybody that faces their own mortality, right. you tend to kind of go back to your roots and you start to think about, again, what's important mm -hmm. and what have I let go of and what do I need to bring back in? Which is something we should all do yeah, periodically should. anyway. Exactly. Yeah. So. I think it, it actually, for a lot of us, it's really turned us into better people, yeah. and it's turned us into doing things that we love. 
So and probably more in tune to other people's yes. pains and sufferings yes. too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think that's probably very yep. true. Yep. Um, you have uh, a fundraiser. Yeah, I assume you. How, how are you funded? Is it all donations? Uh, it's it donations, and then we have we, some grants. Yeah. But grants are tough because you know we kind of provide a warm fuzzy service and. That's getting harder, grant money yeah. for warm fuzzy stuff is, is but they not, should have yeah they should absolutely but we um so it's a lot of it is is our events we have mm -hmm. our big big fundraiser coming up on april 11th and that one funds probably about 60 percent of our total revenue needs wow. for the year and um so that we have that we have a golf tournament and then we get of course a lot of private donations and right. contributions and i imagine yeah it's something like that because mm -hmm. it affects so many people that people that have gone through that yeah. probably and have benefited from yeah. from your help i'm sure and that's a big to, that's a big group yeah. of our supporters I'm are the sure ones that have benefited yeah. so. now the the fundraisers we can't name prices on the air mm -hmm. but we that's um the, the joy of life gala um fundraiser is at the Doubletree Lloyd it Center. Mm -hmm. And tell me, what can people expect at that? Well, it is a silent and oral auction. Mm -hmm. um, this this particular year, we're going to have DJ dance music at the end and so a fun. casino. Really? <laughs> so oh. we're gonna be, we've never done the casino before, so that'll you know, be fun. That, that, but. Yeah. So is it like, um, you know, there's going to be a dealers at like, tables? Uh -huh. I, I yeah. think, those, yep. are, those are fun, yep. actually. Those are so, pretty. Um, our, our event is very fun. We really try to keep it light. I mean, our first auction item is a fire hydrant, a red... Uh <laughs> <laughs> Beautifully painted fire hydrant. You can put it in your yard, and it's yard decor. Is, is, but it, is it's it not against the law? I put it in your yard. You always have a parking you spot. Put it in the backyard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that. you just carry it in the backyard truck. <laughs> but we're going to put that in the oral auction. We had one last year from oh, the same good. donor, and we had a fight for it. And so we're thinking that an oral auction fight for that might that, be kind of fun. Be fun. <laughs> you know, and people with dogs might really like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we, we've got a lot of really. We've got like start a star Star Trek um, from the original series. Oh yeah. All all of the major and cast. That might be even more popular now that you know Leonard Nimoy has passed on so you yes. know um, so we just we just have some really cool stuff but we have fun our auctioneer is great he just okay. really plays with the audience and it's it's always fun people always leave going god this was so much fun I'm coming back so, really oh that's good yeah. that's what you want yeah. because that that word of mouth <laughs> can take you a long way yeah so um tell me can you tell me maybe a little story about somebody that you've dealt with that um that didn't think you could help them, or somebody that you use, has really benefited from, from you know your help at Breast Friends. Somebody that we did help or didn't. That help? you did help. That, that we did help. help. Oh, there's so many. Just we, give me a just give me a story of somebody. I'll give you, okay. I'm going to give you a really sweet story. Um, we had a gal that was she was had breast cancer in her early 20s. Mm -hmm. um, she beat it. She and her husband adopted two little girls, mm -hmm. twins, and um, and then her cancer came back with a vengeance, mm -hmm. and it was it was metastatic. Um, the story just breaks kind of breaks my heart, but she um, had bought some quilt fabric to make quilts for her little girls, and uh -huh. when she realized that she wasn't going to be able to finish the quilts, she contacted Breast Friends. We found out about it. We actually found a woman that would help her make her quilts, and we, we got them done, and then she passed away. Oh, but she, was, she able, was able to give them to the... Yes, Aww. and so the little girl, and they actually made a third one for her husband, so... Um, but that was something that she really, really, really wanted to do, and yeah. she couldn't. So that's that customized support I was talking about. Yeah, she, and, that, and that gave her some peace of mind, yes, knowing that that was something yes, that, that, yes. that those children would always yeah. have. Yeah, so that's know. one example, yeah. and you know we have many. Yeah. Um, we have a program at the prison, the ladies out at the prison really... Oh. We've been going there for about nine years, and we have about 50 women a month that we work with, excuse me, that we work with, and they love what we're teaching them. And we're trying to help them build a better community amongst okay. themselves mm -hmm. because they are the friends and family for cancer survivors right, in the prison. Right, right. They can't call their friends and go, hey, let's, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so we're teaching them, you know, some self-esteem skills because if they feel better about themselves, then they're better suited to help the patients. And they... They love this class, and the class is growing every month. So the class, is it is it for the uh, patients and the friends and family, or is it just for the friends and it's, family? It's for, the, it's for any Anybody female wants inmate that wants to go. Okay. And so some of them are cancer patients. Some just know the cancer patients, and they right. just, you know, so it's really... Um, Probably some of those things they would learn could be used anywhere. Anywhere, you know, in, exactly. in all sorts of situations, yeah, and just we're how trying to be supportive. To, yeah, we're trying to improve the recidivism. That's a hard word for Yeah, me. it is a very right. hard word, that recidivism. Thing. Yeah. Yes, it is, it is tough. <laughs> what, what else do you want us to know? What, what should um, women who are diagnosed with breast cancer, what's, what's the first thing they should call know? Call us. Call you? Call yeah. us, absolutely. We have volunteers um, that like to, you know, we partner a volunteer with a patient and so that they can call and, and talk and, and one check one. in. Yeah. yeah. And so call us because, you know, unfortunately with HIPAA laws and the way they are, we can't just call someone because somebody tells us about right. somebody. We have to have permission. So 
the best thing is just to call our office and um, just, you know, say I'm going through cancer, I need to talk to somebody. And okay. we'll, we'll either talk to me, you talk to Sharon, you'll talk to one of our many volunteers, okay. you know, whatever it if takes. If people are so. interested in volunteering, mm -hmm. what, what criteria is there? Um, Compassion is always good. You Depends. don't have to be a, a survivor. You don't have it to, but help, if you're going to work imagine. with patients, that's helpful because there's a lot of things that come up that yeah. it's kind of like the, one of the first things they ask is, "Are you a survivor?" Right, right. You know, but I imagine there's other things you could use. Yes, help we have mailings and you know, exactly. Those kind of things. You know, yeah. there's always that administrative that drudgery. That we need. <laughs> but you know, people. people well, the like more volunteers that. Yeah. that we have, the less we have yeah. to spend yeah. on those things. So um, we're just about out of time. So okay. I have one question. Um, this you are located. In, you take care of the Oregon, Washington. Area is that right, or is it just we, Portland? Is well, it? our office is in Tigard, mm -hmm. but we actually work with patients all over the country. Okay. Um, in 2009, we opened an affiliate office in Florida, and in 2012, we opened one in Pennsylvania. That's what I heard, and but, I wondered if they were yeah. if they were connected. Yeah, they, they are. They are a part of us, but they, you know, they kind of operate. They're very self right. sufficient. They have to be because yeah. we're not going to raise money here and send no. it there. So, right, right. But it started here. It all started right here. Well, yeah. congratulations Thank on making you. 15 years. <laughs> it sounds like you're doing a great job, Thank and, you. and uh, Thank you. I'm really a great service for the people that are dealing with it and their families mm -hmm. and friends. Thank so. you. Thank you so you much. Bet. Thanks for watching this segment mm -hmm. of Community Hotline. If you have uh, friends, family, uh, anybody who is is dealing with breast cancer, mm -hmm. whether themselves or somebody else they know, now you have a, a resource. So check it out. And um, we'll be back in a little bit more with more of Community Hotline. Mm -hmm.